Have you ever wondered how to have a true new beginning in your life? Hi, I'm Mary Morrissey. I'm the author of two best-selling books, No Less Than Greatness and Building Your Field of Dreams, which became a PBS special. I'm also the founder of Life Mastery Institute. A true new beginning. So many of us want to start something. We want to have a fresh start. But there's so much of the old self, so much of our old history and memory, it's hard to shake off so that we can have a true new beginning. We're in a time of year where many, many people on our planet, over a couple billion people, are celebrating a holiday called Easter. So as a student of world's religions for the last 40 years, I've spent much time exploring both the historical as well as the metaphysical meaning of this time of year. So this time of year when everything that looked dead in the Northern Hemisphere begins to spring into new life. And it's a symbol of even aspects of our life that seem like we've long past missed our moment. We're way past the opportunity. That, that opportunity is now dead to us. There's the opportunity for a new beginning in which great and wonderful new life springs forth. But how do we really do that? And one of the ways that I've found in helping lots and lots of people that I've had the privilege of working with all over the world is to use this look at Easter as an exampling of one life is over and the new life has not yet begun and then how to spring forth out of that dark space and enter into a whole new true beginning. So for a moment, as we take this story of Jesus of Nazareth, who then is cru the crucified, who is laid to the tomb, and to all appearances, life is gone. Life is gone. And then something miraculous happens. On day three, the, the rock is removed and moved over, and he's emerged. So sometimes we feel like our lives, too, are the ones that are held in this dark space and that there's something so big blocking us that we're not able to go forward either. So what happens in that middle zone? Friday's the crucifixion, the old life is gone. There's a divorce, there's a death, there's the loss of a business, there's something that happens that we can't change. That old life is over. And we enter into this space where the old life is gone and there's no sense of our new life yet. Some people stay in that dark cave for a long, long time. Others are able to move more quickly through that middle zone and then step into a new life. So my, what I have found over many years is doing that middle space well is the key to a true new beginning. If you try to do a spiritual bypass and not really acknowledge the loss and not really allow yourself to have that in-between zone for a while and really start to dream new dreams, that if you could and what if, and have that moment, then even if you act like you're going forward, there's so much of us that haven't yet grieve the loss or been able to go forward that we tend to pretty much stay stuck. So I have something that's helped me over the years. I want to offer it to you. In this Easter time where we're celebrating the new life bursting forth, we're celebrating any of us who have this tradition of celebrating Easter, um, both the historical and the spiritual meaning of this, and also that to make it personal in our lives no matter what our tradition, no matter what our faith. Every one of us goes through moments in our life where one life seems to end, the new life has not yet started, and the promise of Easter is do that middle part well, and not only does life begin again, but life gets better and better and better. So doing that middle piece well. Sometimes I feel, as written by Dana and Perry, who started Earth Stewards, sometimes I feel that my life is a series of trapeze swings. I'm either hanging on to a trapeze bar swinging along, or for a few moments in life, I'm hurtling across the space between trapeze bars. I'm hanging on for dear life to my trapeze bar for the moment, but for most of the time, I spend my life hanging on for dear life to my trapeze bar. It carries me along at a certain steady rate of swing, and I have the feeling that I'm in control of my life. I know most of the right questions, even some of the right answers, but once in a while, as I'm merrily or not so merrily swinging along, I look out ahead of me in the distance, and what do I see? I see another trapeze bar swinging towards me. It's empty, and I know in that place in me that knows that this new trapeze bar has my name on it. It's my next step, my aliveness coming to get me. And in my heart of hearts, I know that for me to grow, I have to release my grip on the present well-known bar to move on to the new one. Now, each time this happens to me, I hope, I pray, that I won't have to grab the new one. But in my knowing place, 
I know that I must totally release my grasp on the old bar, and for some moment in time I must hurtle across space before I can grab onto the new bar. Each time I'm filled with terror. It doesn't matter that in all my previous hurdles across the void of knowing, I have always made it. Each time I'm afraid I'll miss, that I will be crushed on the unseen rocks at the bottom of the chasm between the bars. But I do it anyway. Maybe this is the essence of what the mystics call the faith experience. No guarantees, no net, no insurance policy. You do it anyway because somehow to keep hanging on to that old bar is no longer on the list of life-giving alternatives. And so for an eternity that can last a microsecond or a thousand lifetimes, I soar across the dark void. The past is gone. The future is not yet here. It's called transition. I've come to believe this is the only place where real change occurs. I mean real change, not that pseudo change that only lasts until my old buttons get pushed again. I have noticed that in our culture, this transition zone is looked upon as a no thing, as a no place, between places. Sure, the old trapeze bar was real and the new one coming towards me, well, I hope that's real too, but the void between is just a scary, confusing, disorienting nowhere that must be gotten through as fast and as unconsciously as possible. What a waste. What a waste. I have a sneaking suspicion that the transition zone is the only real thing and that the bars are illusions we dream up to avoid the void where real change occurs. Now, whether my hunch is true or not, it remains that the transition zones of our lives are incredibly rich places. They should be honored and savored. With all the pain and the fear and the feeling of being out of control that can accompany transition, they are still the most alive, growth-filled, passionate moments in our lives. And so transformation of fear may have nothing to do with making fear go away, but rather giving ourselves permission to hang out in that transition between trapeze bars. Transforming our need to grab the new bar is allowing ourselves to dwell in the only place where real change happens. It can seem terrifying. It can also seem enlightening in the true sense of the word. Word, hurtling across the void, we may just learn how to fly. And so in this Easter time, I wish for you an appreciation for all the many aspects of this wonderful life. The times when the, your life just seems to be on a mountaintop the times when you're starting out fresh from a time of being in a transition, whichever phase you find yourself in, life is seeking a greater, fuller, expanded version of life by means of you. Happy Easter. Now, if you like this video, please share it. If you uh, haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to it so you'll no be notified about all the new videos. Thanks for coming today. Happy Easter.